Hey, it's Sean and Sue, and today here at Town Square Towers, we are getting a first hand CPR training course today, Sue. Sounds good. Something that we think everybody should uh, be aware of and should. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. You know, like that? That's not nothing. I you might should, crack a rib. Yeah, you don't yeah, joke around with that. That's, all right, I won't joke. So, first of all, kids, in the first three <laughs> seconds, don't do anything that Sue just did, okay? <laughs> Cherie Garrison is with us today. Hi, Cherie. And she is from Hands On CPR Training. Cherie, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. You reached out to us and you said you want to come in and show us a little bit about CPR. And we thought, you know what, we don't know enough. It's important today for folks to know about CPR, isn't it? It's really important. Knowledge is power. And just knowing what to do is going to help assist you with being able to act in an emergency situation. Now, right. something you told us before we started was, in the event of a, a situation, an emergency, 911 is the first thing you want to do. You always want to phone 911 whenever in doubt. Yeah. If you're unsure, first is scene safety. You always make sure that the scene is safe, and then if there's an emergency, you mm -hmm. always want to call 911. Yeah, because 911 and then, of course, the CPR combination, hopefully at some point, you're going to be able to help this person. Yes. Okay. Um, Does your person have a name? This is Little Ant. <laughs> little Ann! Hello, Little Ann! Okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little more like Andy, but this has yeah. Little Ann. What would be the first okay. thing, if we were taking a CPR class with you, mm -hmm. what would be the first thing we would go over? We would go over, first of all, what CPR is. CPR, mm -hmm. cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Cardio is the heart, pulmonary the lungs, to resuscitate, hopefully to bring this victim back. Now, there's three reasons you would start performing CPR. The first is that the victim is unresponsive. The next is that the victim is not breathing. And the third is that there's no signs of life. So you want to just assess that victim for that. And then if there's no signs of life, we'd go right into chest compressions for CPR. Okay. Do you want to show us? Sure. Um, what I'm going to go over today is called hands-only CPR mm -hmm. because if you don't know and love the victim, and if you don't have a barrier device, it's not recommended to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth breaths on a stranger. Yeah. Okay. okay? So the first thing you're going to do is you just look around, you assess for scene safety, mm -hmm. traffic, fire, down power lines, okay, violence. So you just look around and assess scene safety. Then you're going to tap this victim's shoulders to assess her responsiveness. We're not going to smack his face. We're Whoa. not going to shake his head. Okay? okay. So you just want to tap and assess for responsiveness. If he's unresponsive and he's adult, you call 911, you get the AED. If I were alone with an adult victim, I would have to leave to call 911. Okay. I would not leave a pediatric victim to call 911 until I've done five full sets of CPR. Now, when you say AED, that is what we better know as what's better known as a defibrillator. It's Automat yes, it's an automated external defibrillator. It's a machine that you attach to a victim's bare chest. Same reason we're doing CPR. He's unresponsive, no breathing, no signs of life. We put the pads on the victim's bare chest, and it'll assess whether the victim is in a shockable rhythm. So Sue and I are in a situation. We check to make sure things are safe. I'm going to get my cell phone calling 911. Sue's going to run I'm to get the defibrillator. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now we're back at the victim here. Okay. So we're back at the victim. If if it were the three of us, you're calling 911, you're getting the AED, I would start chest compressions for CPR. Now what chest compressions are supposed to do is they, produ they produce blood flow, okay? So you're going to find the area on the victim's chest above where the heart is located. So you're on the lower half but not the bottom or tip of the breastbone. Mm. This victim wouldn't typically be on a table, mm -hmm. he'd be on a, but he'd be on a floor or a hard flat surface. You can't do CPR if the victim's in a bed or in a car oh. because what we're doing is we're sandwiching the heart between the breastbone and the spine and with each compression we're pumping that heart to produce you blood need flow. A heart and and we surface. don't want to give yeah. in whatever we're on. Yeah. Okay. And how deep we're going with our compressions is we're going at least two inches in depth. You want to make sure that you're going deep enough. You have adequate depth. Adequate depth is necessary to produce blood flow. Should we worry where we're going? We're trying to find the middle of the chest. People always worry about they're going to break a rib, they're going right. to do this. At this point with the person's not breathing, we're better to be doing the compressions 
than worrying about necessarily if we're right dead center, correct? Exactly. You want to be in the right spot. Yeah. Okay. And what we typically say is to use the victim's nipple line. The heel of your hand right between the nipples, one hand goes on top of the other, you interlace your fingers, and your shoulders would typically be right over your, your hands, but I'm a little too short. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. But what you're doing is you're going straight down at least two inches and um, you're trying to produce blood flow. You're going at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. Can we try minute. it? Yeah, sure. You want to go at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute, but no more than 120. Some people find it helpful to, to think of a song while they're doing it, if you've ever heard of the Bee Gees Staying Alive song. Happy birthday, <laughs> like that? Or it, it's either Staying Alive or, oh. or oh, depends geez. on who you're working on, Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. Oh, That's my good. word! <laughs> Depends on who you're working with. Okay. Another one bites the dust. Okay. I don't know if that's necessarily <laughs> the best that's theme song the that could fit the no, try but, it. But you're saying to go a hundred times? A hundred beats a minute. If you're doing compression only, your hands only CPR, mm -hmm. you're gonna just keep going with your compressions until 911 gets there. Okay. Really? And if there's two rescuers, you rotate wow. rescuers every two minutes. So it's not like one, two, three, four, five, and then you stop. Nope. It's just keep, keep going. Keep going. And if you have a barrier device, or if it's a family member or a loved one, yeah. traditional CPR is 30 compressions to two breaths. Oh, wow, okay, to the mouth, all right. Yeah. Now on, the, on that, would you pinch the nose and just blow into yep. the mouth? Yeah, you pinch the victim's nose, you seal their mouth with your mouth, mm -hmm. and you deliver enough breath to make the chest rise. It's, it's typically about a second long. Your can you can bring it. someone back to life with just chest compressions? You can. However, um, the victim has a much better chance of survival with CPR, okay. with defibrillation, within five to seven minutes. Okay. So now how do you do the hands? You just sort of did it like this? I put one hand on top of the other. One hand on top of the I other. I interlace my fingers interlace. and um, I, I lead move it with from the heel of my hand. And right? So you yeah. find the right spot, you're down too yeah. low. I'm you right got to go right from... Between the nipples. Yes, right, right here. You're too low. The middle of my no, hand is right... Up. He's perfect. He's good. Oh, well, folks, <laughs> and then I'm just going like this. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep going. Yes. yes. And if it's a loved one or a family member, it's 30 to 2. And you would count your compressions. Counting is helpful because it helps with your rate of compression. And it lets people know where you are. And if Sue and I were both here, I'd say do do 50, and then I'd take a break. She'd do Two 50. minutes. Two minutes. Two, two minutes. minutes. Okay, two, two minutes. minutes. You are not okay. paying attention. Right, that's I would why I'm asking. I would be dead. But it's two minutes, and then okay. you switch. All right. So we've done the compressions. If we know the person, if it's a loved one, we've done the mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Now we go on to the AED. Okay. Now, best this victim's best chance of survival is immediate CPR mm -hmm. with, with defibrillation within a few minutes. Um, by law in the state of New Jersey, all nursing homes or long-term care facilities, all schools and all health clubs have to have ADs mm -hmm. okay. yeah. because this machine will only work on a victim who's in a specific rhythm called ventricular fibrillation and that rhythm typically only lasts between five to seven minutes fo mm -hmm. immediately following cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest is when your heart stops pumping blood. It's different from a heart attack. It's when the victim is unresponsive, no breathing, no signs of life. So best case scenario, Scary. it would be me and Sue, and you're calling 911. Sue grabs the AED, or I grab the AED okay. while, she, while she continues chest compressions. Mm -hmm. CPR would be continued, because you want to take as little time off the chest as possible. Okay, so we're still pumping. Sure. Yep, you're still okay. going. So my first step when I get the AED to the victim is always going to be to turn it on mm -hmm. because mm. it's voice prompted and it talks me through everything. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay. I'm going to put it on the victim on the, the same side as me. Apply Next pads to, to patient's bare chest. Okay. okay. And so these talk plug in yeah. pads connector. Next to flashing light. Okay. So there's pictures on the pads. Okay. One pad goes over the right nipple. The other pad Apply goes a few pads. inches underneath in the connector. left armpit. Okay. Once the pads are on, I would plug them in. In real life, you'd be continuing CPR until I tell you to stop. Okay, in real life. Analyzing okay. heart rhythm. Do not touch the patient. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. So you want to be at least six inches away from the victim. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. I'm clear. You're clear. We're all clear. Mm -hmm. Deliver shock I now. Watch the Press the orange shock As delivered. I deliver the shock. 
Pause. And then you would immediately begin CPR. Questions for CPR. Good. Would that be one shock and that would be it, or you would do this to repeat it? Once an AED is on a victim, you never turn it off, you never take the pads off, you never unplug Until the pads, even if the victim recovers. Okay. 911 will Until the EMTs mm -hmm. get there. Okay. Yeah. So once this is set up, the EMTs will handle it from there. Mm -hmm. Very good. And all the machines will talk you through what to do. It's like a car. Yeah. If, if I gave you the keys to my car, mm -hmm. you'd be able to drive it. Yeah. Some of them are a little yeah. bit different. Right. If you work somewhere, you frequent somewhere that has an AED, yeah. it's important to be familiar with the AED. That's Do you facility. feel like all businesses should have an AED? Um, the reason that specific places have to have AEDs is because the, this is a the victim's best chance of survival and they only have five to seven minutes to get it on so yes I do I feel much more comfortable when I ha I want an AED for my car <laughs> I want to know it's there I mean if it's gonna save your life or a loved one's yes. your mom's your dad's life and it's oh easy. my word it's very easy to use what I do too is I volunteer and I go out to the different schools in our area mm -hmm. and I go to the PTO meetings and I do this demonstration for, for whoever comes it's to fantastic. the PTO meeting. Because it's, yeah. it's important to know. Very important. Because you and never know. Too. You never yeah. know. Knowledge is power. So, like I said, knowing what to do is going to give you the power to be able to act. In How do folks system. get uh, information from you about hands-on CPR training? Well, I have a website. Mm -hmm. It's handsoncpr.com. And um, all of my information is there. I also have a Facebook page. All right. And it's hands-on hands CPR. CPR training. I think this is something that everybody should uh, definitely Everyone get should. for. Everyone should. Uh, you know, now we at least know simple CPR. We also know about using the defibrillator as well. So it's good stuff. And you said that this book here, brought to you by the American Heart Association CPR, is a good you know it's reference a, tool as well. It's a good well. reference, and that's a CPR for the friends and family. Not all CPR requires certification. Stop CPR. So that was every that was two minutes. So okay. every two minutes, you analyzing would clear. heart rhythm. Oh, so now he's going to go through it again. Yeah. Stay clear and you just of clear. patient. So you clear and it's not going to find a shock. Analyzing heart rhythm. No shock advised. Because it's not always going to have a shockable rhythm. Yeah. So then you would continue CPR. If needed, CPR. begin CPR. But um, not all CPR classes have tests. Oh, some, this is CPR for the friends and family. It's an easy class. You just It's a video-driven class. All the American mm -hmm. Heart Association classes are video-driven. And um, it's just for knowledge. It's just like grandparents can go, kids can go. Knowledge Very is cool. power. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. And uh, check it out. It's hands-on CPR training. And now, Sue, if you know something were to happen to me, because I'm the older of the two, uh, you could uh, take care of it there in the studio. I sure could. Cherie, thank you. <laughs> thank you. She's this the best. Awesome. Hey, and for more thank details, you. go to our website at wobm.com for information.